This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. We are now into the third day of the convention here in New Orleans with the SAM, and one of the uh, people who is, you know, I've talked with several past presidents and current presidents. With the essay, and well, now I'm here with a past international president of the International Brotherhood of Magicians who just finished their convention, and also out in Pittsburgh. Here he is, Sean Farquhar. Hey, Sean. Hey, Scott. Great to see you. Uh, yeah, I'm also uh, the Dean of Society of American Magicians number 95. I bet is you it, didn't know that. Is that in Vancouver? The Vancouver one, which had, currently has the national president as the president. And it's interesting because the SAM Assembly 95 also has the immediate past president of the International Brotherhood of Magicians, Billy Shway. <laughs> For the first time in history, both presidents of the two largest organizations came from the same ring and the same assembly. And outside the United States. Yeah, both from outside the United yeah, States. Isn't I think that, that's incredible. It's crazy, right, at the same time. Well, and that's another reason I'm sure perhaps you're going to be having the I say you, we, we the IBM, are going to be having the convention up at Tacoma next year. Yeah, Tacoma. I'm very excited by that. July 10th to the 13th in Tacoma, watch. It's the first IBM I'm going to be able to drive to. Yeah. <laughs> I could drive home at night. It's only like three, two and a half hours away. Well, you put on the PCAM for a long time. I remember you were telling me in one of the earlier podcasts about how that that organization had started to go into decline, and you picked it up and said, oh, I can do this. Yeah, 1992 in the Silmar, they were saying that they were basically packing up and they were done with doing the conventions because nobody wanted to host them anymore, no club wanted to. And I turned to my best friend, David Wilson, and said, hey, you want to do that? And so in 1993, we had 550 people come up to Vancouver. They said, no, we'll go to Vancouver, but they did. And then I did the next one, 94, 95, with my friend Kevin Cardona, 96, 97. Calgary took it over for a year, then I did it again. And then I said, anytime nobody would take it, I would do it. So I did them on cruises, on uh, the PCAM, S E A M. We did, we did uh, three cruises, a couple on Norwegian, one on Royal Caribbean, and, uh, and now this year we're going to San Diego, well, Carlsbad, just outside oh, of San Diego, uh, yeah. uh, in November. And I'm really looking forward to uh, November 10th the 13th. And speaking of uh, cruising, a lot of people are still thinking you're always traveling because it's what you're known for, of course, and all your posts that you make. <laughs> but you're really spending more time at the... Uh your World of Wonder. What is it again? Hidden Wonders. Hidden Wonders, sorry. Yeah. yeah, Hidden Wonders Theater is where I am. Uh, everybody still has this impression I'm traveling, but uh, the only traveling I did this year was flying to Pittsburgh for the convention. Then I went to Nashville, the House of Cards, yeah. came here to New Orleans for the SAM, and I'll go back home and won't leave again until Tricks. I'm the guest of honor at Tricks, and then I'm yep. going to go there to the yep. I'm kind of excited. Uh, Have you ever been to that? Scott I, I, it was one of my favorite conventions ever. The first time Scott invited me, I went to perform a lecture, had the best time. There was a it's guy in the front convention. row, Bubba, who just freaked out, and I was like, these people are awesome. Yeah, he's he's not a magician. So I remember yeah. Bubba was like, I think he's a principal of the school or something. Yeah. <laughs> just just delightful. I did my sign card and sealed deck, and something funny happened. I had uh, cellophane that I tear off. Yeah. I guess it stuck to the bottom of my shoe. So when the deck was sealed, he looked down for the cellophane. He said, even the cellophane piece is gone now. <laughs> I was like, that's magic. It's supposed to. Yeah, yeah it's that's like, the you, way it goes. <laughs> you take the win. Oh, you betcha. Always. Well, going back to the SAM then right now, we've uh, kind of uh, had a couple of days, and last evening was the competition. I thought that was an awesome competition. Yeah, to I, I loved it. Um, and, and it's funny because I saw two of the acts previously. They were also at the IBM mm-hmm. in their competition, both in the close-up, uh, the Jeffrey Wang and uh, Dr. Henry Tom. Henry Tomei, and uh, I love their acts. I just think they're awesome. But yeah, it was, um, even yesterday, the youth, the stars of Tomorrow Show, the, the young lady who did the multiplying billiard ball. Zoe. Zoe? No, no, no I'm sorry. No. Zoe was the MC. Yeah, no, this young lady's name was Ji Wang Xu, Xu or something like that. Um, uh, 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 the Chavez College uh, student. And, uh, yeah. She was Del Sawick. Yeah, she was really phenomenal. Enjoyed that. And seeing the old classical style Chinese act that did the fishing with you know, fish going into the Gulf, into the big aquarium and stuff. It was yeah. really, really cool. And Zoe had some great uh, dad jokes, which was funny. <laughs> yeah, um, it, the, the convention's got some really cool stuff going on. It's very neat. And this, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning for the, uh, uh, what do we call them, the uh, lifetime members yeah, or yeah. nearly dead group. That's <laughs> us. Yeah, when um, look around, it's like, you know, who doesn't have gray hair? You're, exactly. If you don't, it's because you're bald. You know? That's right. You're bald and you got gray hair. Uh, but but uh, it's a great opportunity to see people who really care about the SAM, that they invested money in it to make sure that we're here and doing stuff. It's really we just cool. had a great talk with uh, Christopher Hart and with Mike Caveney, who were talking 
talking about the legacy of the Magic, well, actually the history of the Magic Castle and the legacy and everything. Uh, you're talking about like Randy Pitchford and someone who is making sure and ensuring that in the future there will be a Magic Castle. Yep. Uh, I was born in 62, so the castle's a year younger than me. And I always look at, you know, when they were telling their stories of how they came to the Magic Castle, having grown up there, uh, I dreamed of just even getting in the door. I went when I was 20, underage, uh, only because I walked in the door. It was a, uh, I'd heard, I was at the PCM convention, and I heard that Vernon was meeting Marlowe at the castle. And I thought, I'll go up for that, not knowing that, you know, he had to be 21. And uh, we were in Santa Barbara, so I drove up, walked in the door. This lady named Jean Cantor, I'll never forget her name. She looked at me and said, you're under dressed and you're underage please vacate the property and I was like just like that yeah and I was like oh that was great started walking down the hill on the right hand side there was an apartment building had a sign said apartment for rent old man reading a newspaper and I said you know do you know how much the rent is and behind, not even looking up from behind the paper he said you don't want to live here they'll break in from the alley and they'll steal all your crap go back to wherever that accent came from and I leaned over the paper and went oh my god you're diverted and he looked at me and said oh my god you're a magician <laughs> I tried to impress so I said, you're David Frederick Winfield Verna. You were born out of yeah. What are you, my biographer? And I was like, oh, my <laughs> It did not. It was your first well. encounter with Vernon? First time ever. Oh, I'd seen him at the uh, PCM. He, he did a whole talk there, but I never got to, you know, actually speak to him. He was like three people down at the at the bar rail, and uh, but I never got. So there I am, actually having a conversation, trying to win him over. And he goes, "Are you here for the big do?" And I said, "Do." And he says, uh, "I'm meeting Eddie Marlow." Blah, blah blah. And I was like, "I'm not allowed in." He's well, not dressed like that. You got a jacket and a tie. And I said, "I'm not allowed in. I'm not a member." He goes, "Oh." And he took out a business card. He wrote, "Let the boy in." I I ran down the hill, bought a jacket and tie with the money I had left, went in. Uh, There was a crowd of people. She was really nice. I showed her the business card. She let me in. Uh, Irene came down. They called for Princess Irene. She came down, walked me up, walked me right to the front. Vernon looks up. Oh, shit down. He asked Bruce Servon to get up so I could sit in between him (laughs) and Marlo. (laughs) Bruce was doing a trick with a sticker on it. It was like a sticker that moved magnetically because I was like, it was like a stamp and it was moving on the the cards. And they said, Bruce, just just get up and let the boy shit down. And then for the next 20 minutes, they did basically did magic tricks back and forth while I sat in the middle going three of clubs, three of clubs. I picked the three of clubs. Because that's the last time you want to screw up. And then he looks at me. He says, uh, we're going to go take pictures. And uh, Larry, Larry, come over here and show Sean some tricks. And Larry Jennings took me to the side, walked me to the table, did card tricks. And you were 20. Oh, yeah, I was 20. Yeah. I stayed in the castle that night. Uh, I, I drank in Canada because at, at 19. And yeah. so I felt comfortable having a drink, not thinking about it. And then it was like, no, I don't want to drink too much. And I said to the bartender, you know, can you suggest something other than a beer? And he says, well, do you like Long Island iced teas? I said, oh, I like iced tea. That's what I thought my first one, too. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the end of the evening as well as remember the start <laughs> but uh, Vernon said to meet him for brunch the next day and I was in the same suit sitting in the, the lobby area waiting for him because I couldn't go in didn't have a membership or anything and yeah. he came in and uh, took me in and I, I was practicing a move and he looked at me and said do that again I did it again he says do it again I did it again he says do it with the card face up I did it face up he goes well it's not shit <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, uh, he was very cool. Uh, yeah, fellow Canadian. He talked about you know uh, his time with Doug Henning. He talked about when he was a hockey player. It, it was a really cool conversation that I never ever imagined. It you was, wouldn't have imagined. It just had to be the right place, the right yeah, time. It was so cool. And yeah. and no Certainly other trip to the Magic Castle ever. You know, even when I performed there, they all pale in comparison to you know Larry Jennings, Bruce Servant, Ed Marlowe, me, table. <laughs> it's like <laughs> when is that oh, ever going to happen? Yeah, twenty years of age and slightly. <laughs> drunk at the Magic Castle. <laughs> it was crazy. Memorable. And for more stories like that, if you go back into the Magic uh, Word podcast, we did uh, two episodes with Sean. Uh, oh, we did with Sean. sleeping. We did. And there yes. was sleep was, deprivation <laughs> one. I remember that. I told you about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, you did. You the were... only time I've ever talked <laughs> about female. that. Female. Yes. <laughs> I, I was Venus de Milo. <laughs> Well, we had two episodes. One was about your television experience, and the other one was about your cruising experience, and uh, both completely different and yeah. uh, really worth going back and hearing because uh, you're a man of many stories. Now we're going to have to have another one because i got the movie coming out, Lost in the Shuffle. Oh, you're going you're gonna to have anything to do with that? But oh, I might have a little bit. Oh, my heavens. And I just finished. We traveled uh, to Spain, London, uh, France, Paris, went to Orlando, went to a playing card company called Shuffle Dink, did a full four-and-a-half hour interview with uh, Juan Tamariz, mm-hmm. uh, went to the Magic Circle, hung out with Michael Vinson. Vincent, Alexander de Vivier at the Double Fond. Uh, Richard Turner went to Texas and hung out in a uh, Texas bar with the big swinging doors and everything. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's, yeah. What's the name of the movie again? Lost in the Shuffle. That's right. Yeah. And that's going to be kind of like Delt. That will be uh, It's Richard a Turner's documentary movie. about the relationship between magicians and playing cards while at the same time exploring a 500-year-old cold case mystery. Then go to lostintheshuffle.film.
uh, find out more. I remember when you were doing, along with John, what's John's last name? John Ornoy. That's right. John Ornoy who was uh, working with the... Um, uh, Kickstarter, trying wow. to raise some money, and once you got that, then you've kind of gone on. And this is going to be released, so you and I are going to be sitting and talking about this sometime soon, so this will be an upcoming episode yeah. to talk more about what the filming was behind that and the interesting stories that you have. Uh, so Coming out in November. We're going to do a teaser, a special teaser here at the SAM convention so they can see a little bit it's of... It's going to be tomorrow night or tonight? Uh, it'll be in the daytime during the King Cake special. Okay. I'm not sure what a king cake special is. We know what a king cake is. Yeah, with a little baby in the inside of it. Baby yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah, I choked on it. I, I remember. I had some king cake have told me. earlier this year. The very first piece, that had a little uh, baby in it. I, I mean, the very first bite. Not just oh. the first piece, first bite. And I thought I was going to break my tooth. Oh, <laughs> I, I might have butt too large because it literally got lodged in my throat. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, I got that yeah. little Heimlich. It was You're very special. You're not the first person that's happened to. Oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> and, and I said those words. To, it wasn't with the word baby in front of it, though. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is the baby Jesus. Okay, there we go. So for the Magic Word Podcast, thank you, Sean. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. We'll for the Magic later. Word. Uh, that was uh, Sean Farquhar. Scotty out. Well, the past president parade really keeps going. Uh, and so <laughs> another past president and, uh, and, a, and a performer that you've seen on television, cruise ships, uh, everything about the movie so far, I guess. <laughs> right. Here he is, Vinny Grasso. Hey, Vinny. How you doing, Scott? <laughs> Fantastic. Good to see you again, my friend. So I was talking then with uh, Mark Whitehouse and also with Mike Miller, and they were saying kind of that they are slowly kind of grinding down, I guess, in a couple of years. Next year is going to be like their last year kind of. Yeah. And you guys have been the three amigos, so I guess you're bailing also about the same time? Uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. And your responsibility has been kind of producing some of the shows, or what exactly have you been doing the, the last contest year? Contest chairperson. Contest, that's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I want to say, by the way, the contest last night was outstanding. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought they had a very good variety, and some people were surprised that it was in the show that I thought were going to be part of the regular paid show. You know, they were very yeah. good, very good. Yeah. Yeah, no, we were we were happy with uh, how that all came together. And as I understand it, someone had said earlier, and I don't remember if they said this on the podcast or not, but apparently when they booked this five years ago, there was a, I guess, a performing theater that was part of this casino, but then they tore it down, and that's why we had to go to the Jesuit High School. That's correct, yeah. There was a, within the Harris uh, casino complex, there was a theater that... Uh, we were supposed to have access to and be a part of the the whole thing. So it threw a little little bit of a monkey wrench into it, where you know now we had to bus people over to the theater. But the uh, the folks at that theater were were wonderful. It's a it's a high school theater, and and it was actually great for the the, the kids in the high school to to they were the tech crew. Uh, oh really? High school yeah, kids from, were tech. Yeah, I mean there 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 was the adult yeah. supervisor and one graduate that kind of. Let it, but we our our stage hands were were high schoolers, and they got to it was it might have taken a little longer teching to because magic is different, and they need to be aware of certain things and and other things. But I, but I I thought it was good uh, for for the kids, and then also good for the contestants to um, have different experiences with because when we do shows, we don't know what we're getting. Tech wise, you, you know, so or how many right people right. are you going to be getting yeah. for the contest too? Yeah, to sign up. I was uh, talking. Well, I think one of the cool things is that you also have a People's Choice Award, which mm-hmm. uh, again, keeping with the uh, the theme of the high tech, I like that. So this way, you just throw up a big picture of a QR code that everybody in the theater at the end can just take a picture of, and you can go on, and that way you don't have to go and put your vote, you know, a hard copy in the box or something. So. Right, yeah, no, we, we and we've tested it uh, for several years prior to implementing it, where we did it both ways, paper ballot and the electronic voting, yeah. and just to make sure it was fine. And uh, the years that we tested it, uh, the, the, the number of paper ballots versus electronic ballots were, were not the same total number. Just because, I mean, not everybody was is high tech. T- exactly, tech but, savvy. Yeah. But uh, post COVID, with a QR code, everybody knows what they're doing. But the the uh, split of the voting was remarkably the same from the electronic voting to the paper ballots, uh, even back five six years ago. Hmm. So uh, we felt we felt comfortable enough to to just do it with the. Uh, 
electronic voting. I want to talk a little bit about uh, contests in general as far as getting mm-hmm. the uh, contestants. You had six contestants last evening of the stage contest. How many in close-up contests? We got? Uh, no, that, that was one combined. Oh, it was combined. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There were two, there were two maybe traditional close-up folks and four uh, traditional stage folks. But um, the SAM contest is a little bit different. You have to, you can't just show up and be in the contest. You have to apply for and be accepted. And we give scholarships to all the contestants. They, uh, our, our Magic Endowment Fund uh, provides money to, to each contest. So everyone, whether you that, win or not, whether you win or not, you you uh, receive five hundred dollars uh, to go towards offset your expenses for from being here. And then there are prizes in addition to that. And uh, we. So we felt we only had six contestants this year, and uh, we blended it. We've done that in the past as well. So it was just one overall. Um, and Magic, you know, close-up stage, parlor, You almost every close-up magician is kind of like a parlor magician these days, and every stage magician could be like a parlor magician. Right. So we might as well just call it the parlor contest and and put them all together but uh but no it 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 has worked and um and this year i I think when you see the the results on wednesday uh you'll see that it has worked again so i remember so many years ago when giovanna libera had won the close-up contest gold cups for the Mm -hmm. ibm and uh, i was uh arguing a little bit with mike close about that because he was thinking that it was not close-up it was more stand-up because of the larger props that he was using it's not something that you can kind of carry around with you and do like strolling or something and Gio was saying no you can anyhow just kind of interesting yeah, about how you yeah. perceive your no there's and and the years the i mean i remember when i first started helping uh, paul Cretelli with the con- uh, contest uh this is back in 2006 i think was my first year uh might have been around there um there, there was always a debate about what is close up and, and what isn't, and you, and you see that in FISM too, where people uh, push them into different categories. They they, they, they they start at one and then end up in another. They might say you're funny. You're now in comedy or something, you know, category. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe this is micro or you know, cards exactly. or magic or whatever yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. Now you've been working. Uh, it's kind of changing the subject a little bit, of course, uh, at the Notoriety uh, in the casino there in Las Vegas, and mm-hmm. that actually had closed, I think, didn't it? Recently, the Notoriety. No, is, or, Notoriety. Is, is, and then is Alon, there. There was I, Alon. I, I, I uh, stopped my show back in December, right before the the holidays, mm-hmm. um, mostly because uh, cruise ships were picking up, and they're to me more enjoyable uh, yeah. than uh, the the grind, grind of. Yeah. Uh, uh, Vegas, yeah. Vegas, and also uh, we started doing uh, Penn and Teller present the Foolers tour. And tell uh, me something about that. And where do they tour? Uh, well, we did a we did a little three city kind of let's see what it's like uh, back in March, and uh, it was it went well. And uh, so we we uh, basically put together. A, I don't know the exact numbers right now because there are still some pending, but we're basically doing roughly 25 city tour in five weeks wow. from uh, the middle of September through the middle of October. How do you promote something like that? I mean, I don't see those ads like on television on the CW or anything as far or Penn and Teller talking about the tour. How do people get to know what city that they're in, or is it just advertised by the local performing arts theaters? Or right, so these are all performing arts theaters, and we're in their schedule, and and um, we have ways of promoting uh, for for each venue and and based on when they go on sale, when the advertising and, and all of that goes for all of them. But you can go to uh, foolerslive.com and you can see all the tour dates that have been announced. There are more uh, there are more coming within that that I know that are uh, confirmed, but they're just not on sale yet. So. And as far as the performers, you're, you're touring with that and you're performing that as well, but do yes. the other performers switch out? Or are they kind of the same people, kind of like the illusionists? or? Eventually, there will be some rotation. I mean, we plan on doing this for for years, yeah. um, and there there will be some rotation. We we we're getting this show kind of nailed down because this isn't this isn't Penn and Teller just saying uh, put our name on it and and go. Oh, they're uh, very involved. Very involved, okay. and uh, they want to ensure uh, that the keep qual- the brand too. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, and they're they're also letting us do. Several of their we're, we're basically uh, half us and half cover band, 
uh, for lack of a better term, uh, some of the, the classic Penn and Teller routines uh, they've given to us to do and uh, with a little bit of our own interpretation uh, on it. So, uh, for instance, uh, Jessica Jane and Matt Donnelly do their light heavy box in a way that Penn and Teller would not do it, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But but it is their routine. It is Penn and Teller's light heavy box. You know, most of the scripting is the same and, and all of that, but we, we just kind of uh, make it a little bit, because you don't want someone to watch a routine and just be like, I'm just watching someone else do Penn and Teller's routine. I see, sure. You, you want to see them hopefully bring a little, you know, something to it. Now, uh there's like five or six routines right now in the show that are classic Penn and Teller routines. Um, and we've done it with the same cast. Luckily, we've all been able to free our schedules to, to do these things together. But uh, we're, we're working this next go-around of the, of the show. We're, we're trying to... We're, we're looking at it with, with the, uh, the lens of, okay, what if Alex Ramon isn't available or what yeah. if I'm not available, Matt or Jessica not, not available? How would, we, how would we put in another person and, and make, make right. all of that work? So it will, it will be modular to, to some extent, but it is, it is more of a collaborative show than uh, any of the other touring ensemble magic shows are. There's and these are all people who have fooled Penn & Teller at some point? Uh, no. So uh, it's called Penn & Teller Present the Foolers. It's in, uh, it is not in uh, any direct association with the television show okay. Fool Us. Um, however, it is Penn & Teller are known, obviously, most recent, you know, most, their, their most recent fans and audience are from that show sure. fool us and any magician that is on that show is called backstage like the the terminology is that you know we have a fooler on deck or, or, or something whether like that whether you have or not whether you have or not them, yeah, you're foolers. trying to fool instead of calling exactly. a magician they're a fooler yeah but having said that Alex Ramon has fooled uh, Penn and Teller uh, I've, I've fooled them um, Matt is a writer for fool us uh, and has appeared on the show and Jessica uh, also appeared on the show as well she, she did fire eating as I recall yeah she yeah. did she did and she does uh, so she'll do some fire eating in uh, she's just a wonderful fire eating routine um, uh, in the theaters that allow it <laughs> on, on tour, and then we have some other stuff uh, planned uh, when, when she does it. She's she's been wonderful on this tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have big eye mags or something just, that you can so, uh, present on the screen? Yeah. So our set is just a big, huge screen in the background. I mean, enormous floor to ceiling, similar to the video imaging thing, I guess. Or oh, what am I trying to say? That uh, yeah, video mapping or something like in the back. Well, uh, uh, like on the Fula set, yeah, it's, Fula it's, set it's, it's a big LED wall, so we, we have a projection you. screen kind of thing. And then, you know, we have a, a few other things to, to try and dress up the, the show a little bit, but we're touring. We're doing, you know, load in one city, load out, drive to overnight to the next city, load in. How big in, of a crew so, is that? Uh, we have a crew of four that travel with us, and then it's, wow. you know, the, the, the crew sure. at the, the actual sure. theater. Um, I, I don't know where the question was before that, oh, but I was going to say something uh, Talk else. Talk about, about the IMAGs and everything else as far as what people were doing. And oh, yeah. So there, there, there's one. Um, when we first sat down with Penn & Teller uh, about the concept of this, one of the things that they said that they, uh, that they did not want is they did not want it to be a close-up show. So in other words, they didn't want people coming into this theater and then having to watch the show on a screen. Yeah. Uh, so that's not to say we can't have close-up elements in it and, and all of that, but they wanted it to be uh, a very present show about the, the the people on stage and not looking at a video screen all the Much time. Much like their so, own show. Correct. Yeah. 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 Sounds fantastic. Well, good luck. Continue to look good luck with that. And nice. hope it does uh, go on for years to come. Yeah, no, that's that's our hope. It's, it's I mean, it's just been it's an absolute ball uh, doing it. And... Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to um, uh, work a little bit with casting suggestions, so uh, we we made it where right now it's it's just we, we were there. There was some worry. I know I'm jumping around on this, but there was some worry because there there's a lot of dialogue between cast members uh, on there, and and as you know throwing people in and having them do dialogue can come off really terrible, really artificial. Yeah. And uh, in the, the first three shows that we did, 
that was one of the main comment, positive comments is like, oh, wow, the, the interaction between everyone was great. And that's because we're, we're choosing folks that are, are friends and, and uh, don't have... along with each other. And don't have the ego of, I need to be here and I need this. Or so divas. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun in that regard. Very yeah. cool. Well, again, congratulations on this convention uh, and everything you've done with the uh, contest and everything, too. It's still got another rest of the day and uh, this afternoon, this evening, and uh, tomorrow. So still a lot of stuff going on. If people who are listening to this and you are anywhere near New Orleans, you've got to come and at least get a day ticket for tomorrow and come and see the rest of the show. Oh, tomorrow's show is going to be fantastic. That's uh, uh, the Tina, Tina Leonard. Uh, um, she's the honoree, and it's the it's the uh, the show that she's basically produced. So it's her folks, and I mean folks like Arden James, who I haven't seen in a convention in, in a in a real long time, and obviously uh, she's partial to Mike Caveney, so he's in the he's <laughs> Chris he's, Hart is here. he's in the show. Chris Hart and uh, Jorge Blas. So yeah. it's a fantastic show. Yeah, it's gonna be a great show tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. Vinny, thanks very much. Always good talking to you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> so the Magic Word Podcast. That was Vinny Grasso, Scotty. Yeah. So, well, you haven't had a chance to actually get to the dealer's room, and one of the people that I often uh, visit with whenever we're having the uh, convention reports, of course, is the one who is a perennial favorite of uh, all conventioneers, and that is because you want to know what he's got, what's the latest, and see his fantastic way of demonstrating this. Mr. Harry Allen from Daytona Magic. Here he is. Hey, Harry. Scotty, what do you say, my friend? How you doing? Fantastic. Great day to be alive here in New Orleans. Amen. Absolutely. The Big Easy, right? <laughs> and it has been. It has been the Big Easy. It's a great town. Now, for you, I saw you, you drove over. No, uh, no, no, you flew. We flew in. The older I'm getting, the more flying I'm doing. <laughs> um, I had a very, very busy schedule lately. Mm-hmm. Um, two weeks ago, I was lecturing at the Magic Circle in London. I don't know if you've ever been or not, but it's a phenomenal facility. It's with the theater, and the people are awesome. And then we hopped the ship there for that, and we did Scandinavia. And uh, we had a, a nice dinner with the uh, general manager of the ship, conducted business with him. And then uh, just a couple weeks before that, I was in Hawaii doing some work at the lectures and a little TV wow. spot as well. So this is all within like 60 days. It's just bang. And then we came back to the IBM, and now we're here. So I'm just trying to catch my Are tail. Are you be Magic Live? Or? Uh, no, we won't be there. We were not invited this year, believe it or not. Don't know why, but we are not invited okay. this year. Nor Abbott's either, I guess. Uh, Abbott's, no. Abbott's the buddy of ours, but we used to say we're too much competition. Yeah, so. I understand. Yeah, but we love him. Well, I, just a quick story. Whenever I was lecturing at the... Um, <laughs> Uh, Magic Circle it happened to be the night that, uh, like two nights a year, apparently they have a fire drill. And so they had, they told me just as I was starting to go and saying, sorry, but you know, you drew the short straw. So, you know, they had to evacuate the whole building, which delayed, you know, my lecture by about a half hour by the time they got everybody out, got back in, receded, got started. And then, of course, you got to finish by a certain time before the tube leaves with everybody. Mm. So I had less than an hour, less oh. than an hour to pack, you know, two hours worth of stuff in there. Yeah. So whenever they published that in the Magic Circuit or saying, the fast talking Texas, Scott, or uh. fast talking Texan, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> that's, a great, a that's, that's a great story, huh? <laughs> so I guess if you sold any lectures, it'd be a fire sale, right? That's right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. So it sounds like, yeah, you've been just extremely busy. And then, of course, you've got your own convention coming up. Yes, in November 3, 4, and 5, uh, the do- Daytona Beach Festival of Magic. It's got a great, great lineup with some really, really good talent. Mm-hmm. And it'll be our 23rd year. And they can go to uh, DaytonaMagic.com, I guess? DaytonaMagic.com. Just click on the convention button. It'll be, uh, you'll see everything there there is to see on that. Absolutely. It's going to be at the same uh, facilities. It's called the uh, Resort and Spa uh, in Daytona Beach. Mm-hmm. And it's on the 19th floor. So if you can imagine the dealer's room, you look out the big window, there's the ocean. Yeah. And then you go across the hall to the uh, lecture hall, and then you see the intercoastal water. It's just mm-hmm. a beautiful facility, 19th floor of this facility. And, of course, the evening shows are in a Broadway-type theater. Uh, a few minutes away. So are we walking over or busing over? No, uh, people get their own way over, and if okay. they can't, we just get them a ride. Seems like, didn't we at one time have that at the Jackie Gleason Theater or something? No, we didn't we have it did there. No, okay. no, uh, it's called the News Journal Center okay. is where it is. Okay. And they built that strictly for uh, traveling the Broadway across America and those okay. type of shows there mm-hmm. and so on. It's a beautiful theater. Wow, sounds like a lot of yeah. fun. So you have been uh, pretty busy, and so how many conventions would you say, on average, here up since COVID that you've been attending? It's funny. I think I was cutting back, but apparently it doesn't seem now. now I don't feel like I'm cutting back, but uh, it's maybe one every other month, maybe mm-hmm. right around there. Uh, this just obviously is a lot in a row. Like we have, we had IBM, SAM, then we go to the TAOM in Texas, right. which is like my family. I love it there. Then we go to Atlanta, Harvest the Magic. Then we have Daytona Beach Festival of Magic, mm-hmm. and then in January or the end of January, February is the uh, Magi Fest, right. and then the Winter Carnival. 
So it's just rolling, you know what I mean? They're just spin, right. spinning along there, which is, which is good. Who's handling uh, business back home? Dan Peterson and his wife, Anna, okay. and Pete and Toby. Yeah, you know, they're the new owners of the shop, yeah. president, and I'm still there for God willing another 10 years, but was helping them. Well, that's what I was about to say. Do you ever hang out the shop, or are you just kind of the person who's on the road for them? No, no, when I'm not on the road, I'm in the shop helping okay. them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing's changed since the new owners, believe it or not, uh, except Irv at 82, retired. Yeah. But he's doing computer work at home for a totally different business. So, now, as I recall, also it seems like during a hurricane or flood, the Daytona Beach had uh, or Magic Shop did have a little bit of a water issue. Oh yeah, we had some nice flooding in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, no doubt. And uh, we cleaned it up and back to normal. But yeah, uh, that was a few years back. Yeah, and uh, you know I hate hurricanes. It's the damage they do, and you just learn to live with them. It's just part of what it is, even though you know. That's true. That's true. You, you too, right in Houston, <laughs> right? Houston, that's right. I mean, it's just it's, it stinks. At home, we hunker down. And I usually get my pool screen have to be replaced because it can't withstand yep. the hurricane winds. But uh, it's more of a nuisance, and it's always under the estimate of the insurance. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. deductible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, put out a few thousand dollars. If it had been right. eight more thousand, that would have been they paid would start for. They were to cover that. Yeah. Your deductible. Makes, they're they're you, smart. Yeah. There's insurance companies. You think? <laughs> I'm thinking there. I think that's why they've been around for a while. And then. the buildings are so big, right? <laughs> No that's doubt. right. That's right. It's kind of like in Las Vegas. How do you think they pay for the electricity of those lights? You know. And, yeah. And how about the big buildings there, right? Yeah, exactly. And knocking them down and putting up new ones and brighter and shinier ones. So what's new? What's uh, something that is a hot we, item a then? A hot for item. Dealers? One of them is from Europe. It's called the Choco Choco. It's a box of uh, chocolates. The, actually, the box is empty. And in the blink of an eye. That's a Rocher. What is that? Yeah. The, uh, let me uh, we'll have to do this. Uh, looks like one of those uh, uh, Rocher... What is the bonbons, like bonbons. So there's nothing in there, and instantly, watch closely, say go, boom. They are just there. Yeah. So you can make some chocolate up here in a box. It's called Choco Choco. It's a really, really nice piece of uh, magic. And then there's a brand new electronic fire wallet that you just charge like you do your phone. Really? Really, really, really nice, yeah. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's an on off switch, just recharge it. And it's beautiful. You just hit a button and you're ready to go. So it's just a, a button as opposed to yeah, a... There's no flint wheel. There's no flint no wheel flick. here. Yeah. That's it. Just, that's it. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, like I said, just recharge like your phone. There's no now, does that flick. open also on the other side like a Himber exactly. or something? So that's that way... A, you got it. That's exactly right. There you can put your credit cards and business things in there. That's Ask. the thing. Whenever I do that, they say, show me that again and I open it up and say, what? It's just my, my wallet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'll go to the grocery store. And I go, how much is my bill? And they'll say $10. I go, how much? And a buyer yeah. comes out. And I close them. Just kidding. I'll pay all cash. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, the, the clerk always says, show my friend. And I say, what are you talking show about? what? You've been working too hard? You <laughs> yeah. got it. Exactly. <laughs> my wallet's on fire? What? <laughs> and, of course, this jumping knot. Have you seen the knot? I've so not seen the jumping knot. This is, it's actually called Not So Fast. Let me. Uh, it's called Not So Fast? Yeah, it's a play on words. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, of course. I do it as a color-changing knot. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Let's, <laughs> let me start over. There we go. I'll start over. Wow. Boom. So the knot pops off the rope, and, and then... Instantly, before you can blink an eye... And then another knot appears then, in the middle of the rope. I can show you my knee. I've got a trick knee. It pops there you right go. onto the knee. Wow. Yeah. That's very, very well, What's that called? It's called Not So Fast. Yeah, Not So Fast. Yeah, it's a play on words. Yep. All three of those things you just showed me there are oh, just yeah. easy peasy and, and uh, plays big and can make for a nice routine. I'll tell you, I've got a lot more, too, that are hot sellers, really. We just jump from place... You sure. know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah. have a whole smorgasbord of stuff that we do, but... Uh, yeah, the ring exchange is really nice, too. We just did this one Jeff McBride just got from us. It's a ruby that turns into a cluster of white diamonds. Mm, wow. It's called that the ring exchange, they call that, which is neat. But, yeah, we just have so many things. Wayne's um, Sweetener Rabbit, Wayne Dowling invented this. It's a packet of sugar, and you just, you just grab the granules, grab the granules, and use the ball of your finger and rub the granules, and it forms into a Goshman white sponge rabbit. I don't remember which convention it was, but uh, we talked about that before last time, and I did a, I did a little video, so whenever that uh, you go to that, you can actually see that. I put it on YouTube. Yeah, too. Absolutely. It's a great little trick, Big and uh, I really enjoy it. Copperfield too. has it, Lance Burton, McBride. Scott Wells. Scott Wells has it. I should have mentioned that first. <laughs> And it's just, a, yeah, it's, a, it's one of our popular items that usually sells out at the conventions there. Yeah, yeah. But it's all good. We've got a lot more conventions going on. The, the site, the DaytonaMagic.com, has so many new items on there now. Um, right now, we have a special going on with the mental dice from Ann Verde. Yeah. It was a, I love uh, mental dice. It's a, it's a great trick. It was an authorized sale that we were allowed to do. Okay. And I believe it's 10% off, so it's $30 off. Holy cow. Yeah, just for one week, though. Mm-hmm. It's called Mental Dice, and it's the hottest electronic piece out there right now. It really is. And I, 
I'm not going to compare it to Pro Mystic because theirs is a completely different kind of a thing. Uh, but the idea is w- that you can uh, roll a die and you know exactly what the uh, through a thumper, basically. What the, oh, wait, wait, what I, no, this is different. Oh, it is. This is three different dice: red, white, and three, blue. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you know not only what's on them, what color? Yes. So and there are no thumper. Right. It's actually a digital readout. Yes. Okay. So That's you a can bit tell different them, than the one. Yeah. You got so you can actually tell them the red die has number one rolled. Blue dye has this number, and the white one has the other number, which is really neat. Yeah, it is. And I know that one is a little bit more expensive than just the single mm-hmm. dye, and so that's on sale for 10% off now yes. through when? Yet uh, one week from yesterday. Okay, and uh, if you guys listen to this, of course, in real time, go over and check it out now. In fact, check out uh, Harry and uh, all the different places he's going to be coming, and go over to his website then, too. So uh, there's just a, uh, uh, a brief ad for <laughs> one of the dealers we got here at the SAM. Yeah, you can use the we got <laughs> And we got a lot of dealers uh, over here then right now. You don't hear a lot of background noise here in the dealer's room because there's another activity that's going on that is the uh, Tina Leonard panel discussion that she's hosting uh, along with her husband uh, Mike Caveney and has uh, Christopher Hart there, Jorge Blas and Arden James are all over uh, in another room then right now. So that's uh, going on. I was just uh, listening to some of that. There's kind of some interesting stories about how she developed her act and and, uh, and very, very, very interesting and everybody is over there. That's why nobody is over here (laughs) right now. But they'll be here momentarily because the uh, uh, the thing just ended, I think, about three minutes ago. So, Harry, thank you very much. Always a okay. pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Scotty. You're cool. awesome. We'll see you down the road. You got it. <laughs> Till later. That was Harry Allen, Scotty Allen. Since we do have just a few moments of uh, quietness a little bit, which... <laughs> <laughs> is a little bit different than the cacophony you normally hear in a uh, dealer's room. I thought I would come down and uh, speak with uh, another dealer who happens to be a friend of the Magic Word just uh, recently. Thank you very much for your donation. There's Wolfgang Wallet. Hey, Wolfgang. Yes, hi, Scott. Nice to meet you here. <laughs> yes, I'm glad to see you here then as well. You go to a lot of conventions then as well. I know you're going to be going coming up. Uh, you're going to be going to, I know, the CAOM coming up. Yes, what else have you been doing this year? Uh, I've been doing Apra Condapra, which is a nice little convention in the Midwest that yep. I like to go. I've done the Winter Carnival, which is also yep. a nice little convention. I'm doing the SAM, I'm doing TAOM, and I'm doing Magic Life. Mm-hmm. And I wish one day I can do Abbots when they're not all with all at the same time. <laughs> that is the problem. Yes. And I can imagine that a dealer just cannot jump from one to the other because of uh, moving all the stuff to be there the next day because they finish it this, this year, Saturday night, and then they begin the next Sunday, uh, next day, uh, with the dealer's show over there. But uh, as a registrant, I'm able to fly from one place to the other, so it's not going to be as difficult. It's going to be not going to get much sleep, but yeah. I'll, I'll make it at least over there. So what's new? What's, uh, what's, what's one of the things that's a hot seller for you over here? Well, the uh, two Two sevens here called in Melt is our newest thing. We show two sevens. One goes on your hand and then the other one comes out and goes on top. You push the, uh, the cards together and now suddenly the pips from the face disappear and appear on the back of the other card. It's I've, called in what? Uh, it's called the Melt or the Optical Cards. Melt or the Optical Cards. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is fast yeah. and very visual. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun to do and we sell a lot to conventioners that are not, you know, professionals yet right they're right. on their way to being those but right yeah um it's it's quick and easy you can carry it around with your friends at the bar so that's what people like these right. days yeah that is a good idea that they can carry around in the bar and then it is in a little packet uh, pocket uh carrier there so you can always carry something else uh, another packet trick with yeah, it so then too put a bank note in it or whatever oh, you want to put that's in right that's yeah. right uh, and so, yeah, you've been busy going to the other conventions. Have you seen much of this convention so far? You've been uh, here all the time. You know, I'm doing this for 35 years. So I really don't go to lectures or shows anymore, which yeah. is, you know, I've seen most of them, and I don't go to the events anymore. Yeah. But I hear it's been a good convention for the attendees, and uh, they're having a good time, so that's all that counts yep. at the end of the That's true. has been a lot of fun. Well, it's good seeing you then as well. I hope continued uh, success here and then on with the other places. I will see you down the road. I'll see you at the uh, TAOM. Well, see you in Magic Live in a couple weeks and then TAOM in yeah. Houston soon. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. And that's tricksupply.com. Tricksupply. So go check them out. Yeah. Thanks again. Appreciate it, Wolfgang. Thank you. This is Scotty Allen. One of the things that was introduced here today, actually, is a new book that is the history of the Society of American Magicians, and it has been thoroughly researched by David Goodsell and some others, and then finally brought around to home plate by David Charvet, who's my guest right now. Hey, David. 
Hi, good to see you again. Thanks. And you as well, sir. This is an amazing tome that has been completed. <laughs> a finally. tome, yes, it is a tome. <laughs> the difference between a book and a tome, the tome is heavy. It's a That's he- like 450 pages? No, 326 pages, but it's got 460 <laughs> photographs. That's what it was, okay. So it's a lot of pictures, a lot of text. It's a little over 100,000 words. And it's more than just the history of the SAM. It's really the history of magic in America throughout this entire 120 years of the Society of American Magicians. So it was really, David Goodsell worked about seven or eight years on this project, or more, really, probably 10 years, researching, writing, getting it all together. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2022. Then I was called, and they said, can I take that and put it all together? Bring it home. Yep. So I edited and did the layout and design, and I'm glad it's done. I'm so amazed whenever I heard you talk about that this afternoon that it only took you six months then to do that part. Yeah, it was a little less than six months, actually, but no, it was full time. My wife kept calling upstairs, what are you doing? I said, working on the book. (laughs) So you weren't selling any antique cars then, I guess. Well, I was doing that too, (laughs) and doing shows and everything else. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Wow. So what is one of the most interesting or amazing stories in here that come to mind? Well, there are lots of amazing stories. Of course there are. It's hard to pick out one because there are hundreds of them. It's like a baby. No, it's true. Uh, Houdini, of course, is a huge part of the book because he was president for almost 10 years. But he was not the first fight, first president. He was not the first president. It was a man named W. Golden Mortimer. There's a quiz question for you. <laughs> Who was the first president of the SAM? W. w. Golden Gordon Mortimer. Mortimer yeah. Yep, he was a doctor, physician in New York. He started it along with another guy, another doctor, Sarah Ellison, started the club in 1902, and the idea was to combat exposure. Because lots of exposure was going on in vaudeville acts and in newspapers. Gee, nothing changes, does it, in 120 years? So they started it, and it took off from there. But Houdini is the one who really blew it up into a big national organization. And it was, he, they say, for nine years was president. And it's just his dedication. People always talk about Houdini being an egotist and self-centered. And all. He really gave a lot to the SAM. And made it the club it is today really we're still talking about Houdini and what he did one of the reasons was because he brought in some of his other friends with Keller and Thurston and others they actually all joined early on Keller Thurston they all joined in 1902-1903 all those guys were early members as was Houdini then Houdini quit and they brought him back as an honorary member and then he took the bull by the horns in 1917 became president when the SAM when he became president they had about 400 members and it was basically a New York club. Yeah. Houdini was had he didn't have the idea, but he's the one who spearheaded the idea of assemblies around the country. And because he was touring and traveling and was the most famous name in magic, people came to see him. He'd let them perform on stage during his act, and he'd get all the local magicians in each town to form an assembly for the SAM. So by the time he died, the club had gone from about 400 members to about 1,600 members, or 1,300 members by 1926. So... It was a big shot in the arm that it needed. There were a lot of famous presidents, too. Cardini was president. Howard Thurston was president. There were lots of famous presidents of the SAM over the years, really top pros. So it was the club of the pros, really, for many years. And this year we are celebrating, of course, our 94th convention. But yes. what number? 100 and what? As far right. as the, since the beginning. Well, 121 years, 1902. Here we are in 2023. That's right. Yep. That's right. David, thanks for uh, Thank you. working on that. That's Thank amazing. You. It was a pleasure to do, really. And so yeah. people who want to buy this, where can they go to find it? Uh, they can go to uh, magicsam.com, and I believe there's a link right there to the book. Uh, there is a deluxe edition, or a premium edition, which is bound in black leather. That one is $150, and uh, there is a standard edition, we call it, which is red leatherette, gold stamp cover, pretty book. They're both pretty books, but the standard edition is $85. So, But uh, I think they're almost sold out even today, the day that we introduced it. They're almost sold out of the premium editions. Limited right. to 250 copies. They've sold well over 200, I know, already. Wow. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But by the time that people hear this, even tomorrow, they may all be sold out. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, magicsam.com is where they'll Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for the magic community. You are just an amazing person. Appreciate it. For the Magic Word Podcast. That was David Charvet. Scotty out. So as we kind of mingle around a little bit during the uh, cocktail hour over here, a couple of people who are going to be performing tomorrow evening show. Uh, one is Arden James. A good art to see you again, Arden. Hello. It's been a while since you and I have worked together. Yes. We both aged a little bit. I don't remember you having the gray hair. I've always feel like I've had this, but 
You're starting to look more like me. You're starting to get more handsome. I was just <laughs> going to say that. And someone who is our guest of honor, and that's Tina Leonard. Hi, Tina. Hi. Hi. So glad that you were here then, too. I'm so. very happy to be here and with Artem. And you guys just finished working together at the castle during the uh, palace? Oh, uh, it's been a while back, but we did it for many years, yeah. But yeah. I hadn't seen Art in, in a while, and I'm really happy to see him again. Was this a surprise for you whenever they told you that you were going to be the guest of honor? Yeah, I, I asked him twice. I, I, I said, <laughs> wait, what, say that again? Because, yeah. you know, I thought maybe there was something else they were saying. Uh, and I said, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I'm honored. So, uh, yeah. Well, and Jorge Blas is another one who has come, who has been a friend of yours, longtime friend, who is influenced by you, I guess. Uh, and I'm influenced by him. This is yeah. what this is all about. We all inspire each other. And yeah. So he's brilliant. Um, does He has a lot of great material, original, and he knows how to adapt things that aren't original, which makes it really interesting. Well, that was a nice uh, presentation that you guys had given today and having a little bit of insight and talking about kind of the, the genesis, of not only of your act, but other kinds of things and performing around the world then as well. So uh, are you going gonna to be doing which act in tomorrow night? What are you going to do, Arden? Uh, what, what did you call it? It's a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. Me, I don't know. i got to figure it out. i got to go practice. you got to figure out what you're going to do. <laughs> you're going to do a mop woman routine, is that right? There, there, there you go. <laughs> that would be a surprise. That would be a surprise. Very good. Well, listen, good seeing you both of you guys, and uh, thanks for coming and making this uh, special, because it is performers, you know, like you, who are the celebrities of magic, that really, you know, everybody who is here is saying, oh, look, there's Arden James, there's Tina Leonard, and so, you know, glad you're here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. We're definitely happy to be here. We're here because we want to be here. Not quite like Cuba, although that was an awesome convention. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole gotta, other thing. you got to have different levels. Of, and there are different levels. And, yep. and different types of... I, there's so many types of magic conventions. I really find them all interesting. Has there been a convention that you have attended that sticks out in your mind, whether it's a FISM or wherever? It might have been a small convention. It's like, for whatever reason, like hospitality? I know. Or... Uh, I, no, every, everything has something good and different, and I only go to ones that I know I'll have a good time. So I haven't yeah. missed you pick it. pick a choose. Yeah. I do choose, yes. Yeah. Arden, how about you? Something comes to mind? Uh, this, this one, uh, I think everybody <laughs> should come. Well, it's I, not here. I him to come because he was a big inspiration to be here. So, so had it not been for Tina, you wouldn't be here. No, no. <laughs> so for the Magic Word Podcast, I was Tina Leonard and Arden James. Scotty out. As we are continuing around on this, they're getting ready to open up for dinner, but just real briefly, I'm here with Christopher Hart and Mike Caveney. Hey, guys. Hi, Scott. Howdy, Scott. Good to see you guys. So you're going to be part of tomorrow night's show. It's going to be uh, the two of you plus uh, Tina and Arden James and Jorge Blas. Be That's on. it. That's right. Yeah. And you guys just come from the castle. Uh, oh, Tina and I did. Yeah. Chris just came from Las Vegas. And where were you working in Vegas? Uh, there's a hotel called the Airhorn Hotel that a friend of mine is now entertainment director of. And, and Lorenzo. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was doing a couple nights there. It got me warmed up for uh, my run here with Tina Leonard and friends. So what do you think of the new book, by the way, the new SAM? Oh, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Really, uh, yeah. David's done a wonderful really job. Really did a great job on it. They both should be thrilled. David Charvet and David Goodsell both did a great both job. Both Davids, yeah. 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 So what's your next book that you're working on that's coming out? Right now I'm working on selling a book. Which is? The Final Conference Illusions. And where can they pick that up? Well, they can pick it up here or they can pick it up at uh, magicwords.shop. Uh, Magic words, not to be confused <laughs> with the podcast of a similar name. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> dot shop. Dot shop. There we go. And uh, what else are you going to be doing once you get back to uh, L.A.? Look for a Chris. job. Look for as a, always, that's kind of what we are. One job, your job is always I, looking for another job. It's true. I do a lot of stuff, as Mike does, for the, we're trustees at the Magic Castle, so there's always some project we're in the middle of working on and fixing it. And just real quickly, as you explained today, the difference between the trustees and the board of directors is what? Board of Directors runs the business. The Board of Trustees runs the magic side. So who runs the makes the decisions about electricity or whatever? The Board of Directors. Well, okay. yeah. That, well, uh, there's a general manager that basically runs the day-to-day -day operations. The, the kitchen staff, the valet, anything that's running the castle, the staff, that's the general manager. 
but the board of directors hires the general manager. They have oversight over him, and they get, you know, he. Uh, but they, the board of directors is guiding the financial direction of the castle. Repairs. Okay, we're going to fund the new air conditioning system. Okay, let's raise the performer's salary. Yes, we're going to pay for this housing. Uh, that kind of stuff. And the, the trustees just go. We should do more magic in this area. Let's bring right. in this axe here. And yeah. Right. So. And the fellow who took Joe Furlow's place again is named Irvay Levy. Irvay. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so he's Frank, a general manager. Yeah. Him. And yeah. he's got a, a, a background in um, running clubs, private um, uh, membership clubs, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, cook, uh, chef history, right. food history. So. Well, we need to get going because right. we are being seated right now. Christopher Hart and Mike Cavey, thank you guys very much. See you later, Scott. See you. Scotty out. Thank you.